What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry at TJR Sim here. Today we are looking at the unboxed version of the AccuForce V2. I know you have seen plenty of these over the years, uh, but I will let you know what I found in the box. Obviously an AccuForce V2 Pro complete kit, as you can see here. Using my little uh, stick here to kind of cover everything good and uh, thoroughly for you. I did want to make a special note. I, I went ahead and did it unboxed because I think uh, unboxings take too long and people spend too much time on them. But there is a good note that uh, note to be made about their boxing, and uh, it comes. You know, it doesn't come with a box in a box. It is located, you know, with the Sim Experience wheel. So someone, if you left it on your doorstep, could potentially see that. Hey, this is an awesome system. I can steal during Christmas time. However. Uh, they come with a signature required normally at, uh, when you get shipment. So that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but for those that may not be home, when they uh, get delivery, you, you would uh, you probably want this box inside another box so you don't see what's on the outside of the box. Or the outside of the box, rather, does not tell you what's on the inside of the box. So, just a note. Also, the boxing comes very well done, very heavy duty, thick cardboard uh, with these staples inside it. Uh, so the staples are underneath the tape when they tape it all up, so they will not be snagging, obviously, on any other products during shipping. Uh, the shipping packaging itself is very heavy duty uh, foam. Uh, this is just for the rim itself. Uh, which you know with the button box is you know $400 button box at $50 rim that they sell uh, But that's just for the rim itself and then obviously all the rest of the Products are done in the same manner where they are um, uh, Well taken care of and boxed up uh, To get it to us customers safely All right, so that's enough about the boxing like it I like the care they take into it Let's get into the V2 here, and this is what comes in the box. So you get the V2, and I, I, I could have put myself in here and handling the products and stuff for you, but really the, I guess the star of the show really is the uh, Sim Experience logo. But first impressions when you take it out of the box is it's very well done. Uh, it's a very small package, you know, you, you think it's a lot bigger than it is in person uh or sorry on the website thing you do in person but you know there's the rim and that's the box right so it's it's pretty dang small uh comparison here's a piece of water right it's a water bottle next to the next to the system so i'll give you some uh scale factor there right it's it's a very small unit i don't see anybody having any problem fitting it on their rigs Besides that they may not have a rig strong enough to handle all the awesome torque that it's putting out. So, I love the small enclosure. Uh, it's very streamlined. It looks very um, futuristic to me. Almost like an alien or, or like a, a, a alien machine or something you'd see in Star Wars or, or a Star Wars machine or something. I'm not sure. It just uh, has a really nice look to it. Nice metal finish, obviously. Everything's metal in it. Uh, here's your quick release uh, but yeah it's it's done up really well uh, the plugs of course on the back and it's coming with your plug here that plugs into your box your controller box right there so this is sending the controller box is what's sending the power to your wheel now as far as the controller box goes it's just a plastic box uh, had a little bit of ripple in the in the uh, sticker i just smoothed it out made it straight stickers are really hard to stick on plastic they don't want it to adhere, especially in this colder weather we're having right now but uh it looks really good actually nice picture of your box you're going to want to put this somewhere it's about you can go up to six feet away from um your unit but uh yeah you, you i think you're going to want to have it somewhere close to, at least in the vicinity that you can get a hold of it because it also comes with this on off switch here which now you would plug this into the back of your box, this other end into your power cable, of course it goes into your wall, 110 volts, uh, but you're going to want to be able to access this so you can turn it on and off, otherwise 
if you have it plugged into your PC, every time you turn your PC on, your motors are going to cycle on. So uh, I would love to see that they offer a an extension of a stop button, you know, where you have the big red buttons that you could put uh, closer to you on the rig uh, to where you could just turn the power on and off yourself. That would be pretty nice. Uh, but, you know, something they could always add uh, in the future, maybe whenever they come out with the V3, because, you know, they're probably going to be product improvements. So, anyway, that's your power cords. That's what your box. Nothing on this side. There's your fan. Heavy duty fan. I hear they're loud. We'll see. Two USB ports, and then of course your uh, your data port right there in the middle. And well, actually that data port there in the middle is for like to plug in uh, pedals and stuff to it. So if you can plug directly into it, I don't know of any that plug into that. I'm sure there's some uh, uh, electrical engineers out there that know what to do with it. There's your data ports as far as coming off of your uh, wheel itself into there, and then of course your power plug. Now this takes two USB ports on your unit. However, you don't have to utilize both of them. You can just utilize this one here to plug into your computer. The only reason you would need the other one is if you were plugging in something, be careful that, set that down, into the back of your rim. So you have a USB port there on your rim. If you're plugging in some, uh, like a phone or something like that, you're gonna keep charged with a display up here, um, or button boxes or something like that, right? Um, you're going to have to utilize that other port there to send power to it, okay? So that's just kind of how that works. Uh, but if you're not utilizing that, then, you know, no big deal, just use one USB port. Uh, this will, of course, control your button boxes that are on the rim and obviously, you know, send power to the unit. All right, so, and these come with all the screws to screw down uh, the actual unit itself. It's got the four bolts in here. <laughs> Oddly enough, it comes in a nice hefty bag, which is what I have in my pantry here too, so I thought that was kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, it comes in a hefty bag. So now that we got the power out of the way, Let's get into the cords that come with the rim. These are, it comes with one extra. So there has been some issues with people having um, their cords snap off just because they forget to unplug it from your wheel when you first cycle on your unit. So they do uh, give you an extra one so you're not down until you get another one. So that's actually nice that they do that. Uh, also, I got the brackets for the angle brackets, and actually the brackets come with the same five degree increments, but the same design that you see on the unit itself. So it looks re looks really nice, and nice you know powder coated uh, finish on these. So it's it's really nice, nice stuff actually. Uh, I think the brackets are a little expensive uh, for forty five bucks for the kit, but uh, you know they do the job, and they are. Got some five degree increments, which I do like. Give you some adjustability, and I can always use different adjustability to cater this setup the way I really like it. Anyway, I'll put that together, of course, obviously. Can't wait to get this on the rig. Also comes with two USB cables that you're gonna need. But you would utilize at least one to your PC plugged into there. The other one, if you wanna utilize the USB port out on your rim itself. Now, the rim, the part that you're gonna hold, the part that you're gonna be loving is actually really good i was surprised you know this is just a 50 dollars alcantara rim people you always hear them on on ebay talk about or on, on different reviewers talking about oh this is just a 50 dollars rim well it is 50 dollars rim in fact sim experience sells it for 50 dollars but i tell you what the quality of this rim is up there it feels really nice very plush Alcantara with a nice leather strap around the center strap. And you know, this same quality rim, if you're going to get it on the Fanatic website, is $100. So, yeah, pretty good. Plus, it has a button in the middle. Uh, ex obviously, excluding the button boxes, but just the rim itself is $100. So, you know, a $50 bargain, you know, what they call a bargain basement rim or something like that, is it's actually very high quality. I like it. I like it more than I thought I was going to like it, to be honest. I, in fact, bought me a Momo uh, rim. 
uh, the Mod 30 to use. So, oops, my camera stopped real quick. So let me restart where I just left off. So I did pick up the Momo rim as well because I wasn't thinking I was going to like this rim. Now, I think the Momo looks way better. I think it feels a little bit more comfortable in your hand. But actually, it's a little bit more ergonomic is what I would say. But um, this one's actually softer and more plush in your hand. So it, it, as far as just squeezing it, it feels really good. Really surprised of how, how well I actually like this rim. So it's not as dished. See the dish on it? It's not as dished as, say, the Momo is. The Momo has quite a big dish there, which makes it harder to reach your buttons. So I can see how they went with a little bit more flat-faced uh, wheel than, say, the Momo. They used to actually offer the Momo as, as kind of an incentive. Sorry about that. Some hot riders out here. Uh, we used the Momo. Um, they used to offer the Momo with the Pro System here as an incentive. You know, it'd be like, this is a $240 rim, $239 or something like that. Uh, in which I originally ordered from Sim Experience, but they ran out of stock, so I canceled that par portion of the order. And of course, they just refunded me the money for that. But I went ahead and picked it up on Amazon, they had it in stock. Boom, here it is. Tried it out uh, with my Fnatic one over here, which works good. So, but I digress, right? Let's talk about the rim a little bit more. Try to find a spot for this here. Uh, the rim more, as far as the buttons themselves, listen to them. They're pretty basic. They don't feel as tactile as, say, DSD button boxes. Here's a DSD button box. Those definitely feel more tactile. These are a lot softer buttons, so just give you a little comparison. I know DSD is very popular for us sim racers out there, and I am going to retrofit this on there. Uh, I did get in contact with them to see if they had, they're they producing the brackets anymore, but they're not uh, at this time. So I'm just going to make my own. I may actually just modify these, uh, cut off the, the uh, ears right there, and drill a couple holes and stick these on there and be fine. If not, I already worked up a design. I'm an engineer by day, so... Already worked up a design to put them on there, so I may just do that. I'd have some aluminum and just uh, spray paint them black or, or gloss black or something uh, for that. But anyway, going on to the wheel here, you got what eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This one's a button as well. That's thirteen buttons. Six bolt pattern on here. I believe only three bolts are actually holding it on there. You can look at Sim Exper or Sim Racing Garage for the whole tear down of this wheel. I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, it, it, you can tear it down, you can tear it down. But anyway, uh, the main thing that most of us want to know is can you switch off the rims? Yes, you can switch off the rims. These pods are actually even adjustable They move up and down as well. The bottom ones are not, they are fixed. So you're going to want to, uh, look to see what rims uh, on the Sim Experience website and the forums they actually have a thread of, of, of rims that bolt right up to this. But, you know, out of the box, you really don't need another rim. Uh, this one's actually really good. This even has little indentions here at the top as far as for your fingers go. That's really a nice little touch. I like that. Uh, same here on the side. You can see the indentions here uh, to where you're gripping it with your fingers. Like so. So, yeah, it's a very comfortable wheel, actually. Uh, you know, I don't know why it used to get so much flack. I guess because you're buying this big system and I think you should have, you know, a nicer rim to it. I mean, yeah, sure, who, who doesn't want more, right? But this is for $50 rim. It's a freaking good rim. Anyway, uh, carbon fiber, real carbon fiber. Uh, paddle shifters, listen to these. Now, I heard, saw a lot of videos about these where they uh, don't feel very tactile. And they got a nice click to them. You feel the click, but there's the click right there before you do full engagement right there. So you're actually engaging the button right there, not even all the way this way, right? So this part of the travel is a waste. I'm not doing anything. You're, you're actually engaging each gear. 
right at that point. And that's about what, seven, eight degrees right there, but the other 20 degrees is a waste. Uh, so that could be improved on, I think. But, um, and it, I, I believe it's just adjusting that where you actually click that in right there as far as adjustment of the button. You can back that screw back out and make where you don't actually feel the click until you're a lot, oh, my finger away, until you're a lot further in. So if you back that nut out, you can uh, feel the clip, click, click, if I can talk, a little further in. So that, you know, that's all you can ask for, really. You got some adjustments to be made. If you want to feel the shifts right off the bat, boom, you're done. Or if you want to feel the shifts at this point, till you're all the way back, then yeah, there you go. So that's nice. Um, this is, of course, a quick shifter as well, a true quick shifter. It just fits right onto the shaft there. You want to hold this shaft here, spin the rim a little bit. I, I can't two-hand it right now, but uh, that's what you're going to want to do to snap it on there. Very secure feeling. That quick disconnect is just like this BG quick disconnect, same way, uh, which I picked this up because the plans going on to this is, is to add a, uh, a separate wheel to it, which I'll be doing a video on. But before I get into that, let's finish out the unboxing here. So the rim, it, or sorry, not the rim, the wheel base itself, very compact, looks very, very sleek and futuristic to me. I like it. Uh, nice carbon fiber face here, real carbon fiber. You can, of course, take these two bolts out on each side and uh, put you up some button boxes to it. Uh, listen to the engagement. This is infinitely turning, uh, not like it has a, a hard stop in there, so you have to set the stops within the software itself to whatever you want or don't. Uh, there is a graininess to it. Now, I saw some reviews, people talking about, oh, it feels a little grainy compared to the new Fanatic direct drive wheels that are coming out, which I do have a DD2 on order as well. But um, I think that's more of a mechanical thing. Even when you put the rim on, and turn it, you feel a little bit of notchiness in here, which I was kind of surprised. But I, I'm gonna see, tell you where I feel it. Nothing, boom, boom, boom. Each one of those stops is a, is a, is a notch. Now you can't hear it, right? But that gives you the indication of where each little notch is. It's probably the spline that's in there. Uh, I don't know. But I was a little bit surprised to see that with a direct drive wheel. There's a notch, 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 notch. So what are you traveling? Maybe a degree? Half a degree maybe? Yeah, about a half a degree. Not even. That's the notch in between, right? I don't see anybody else talking about this, but the, it does have a notch. Now, is this notch gonna bug you? I doubt it. You know, this thing's gonna be putting out so much torque, 13 Newton meters of torque that, um, and, and I'm not gonna list off all the specs because you can look them up yourself. Uh, I'm just giving you my first impressions and then out of the box and stuff, but I was a little surprised to see that. But I doubt you feel that notchiness uh, much in the rim itself. You, I'm okay, you do feel it, if you're trying to look for it. However, when this thing's pumping out the torque to you, uh, you're, you're probably not gonna feel it that much, but I believe that's what they're talking about when people say they feel a little bit of graininess. You feel it more if you grab the hub here. You can feel that step from, I guess, the stepper motor that's in here. I believe that's what it is, a stepper motor. Uh, you know, it, it definitely has a lot less resistance than say like a Fanatic wheelbase does, but uh, the V2. But uh, yeah, it's it's there. It is what it is, right? Well, once we get into racing, uh, I'll tell you uh, if I feel anything on it. This is the USB, or not USB, rather, the phone cable cord that plugs in. If I can get it here, into here, into there, and of course the other end to the back of your rim. 
see if I can do this real quick. So you see me struggle with trying to put that on one hand and I just, you know, stopped the camera and, and did it myself. But anyway, uh, you know, talking about the, the little bit of the graininess, a little bit of the notchiness you feel when you're turning the wheel itself like this, it is smooth as butter. Uh, I mean, it just goes right. Uh, very smooth. You, you don't feel that notchiness at all. And, and you know what? I really wouldn't say it's that much of a notch. It's more of a kind of like they describe it, you know, being a little bit grainy. I think that's a mechanical thing. I don't think that's a software uh, thing, but, um, it's just the uh, characteristic of the motor itself. Now, if I go really slow, I can feel the notch right there each time. Notch, 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 notch. It can be felt uh, if you're going slow, but I would imagine once you start pumping out the 13 newton meters of, of sustained torque that this thing has, uh, you're gonna not feel that at all, okay? Because uh, no one drives this little bit at a time right no one does that uh so if you're just turning into somewhere like this slow i do actually feel that i do feel that if i'm turning slow so i imagine if you're doing like a uh, truck simulator or something like that that you're going to be doing some slower driving you will feel a little bit of that notchiness uh fanatic or sorry like forza well i guess forza seven um you're uh, doing uh, ACC project cars and stuff. It's there, but it's 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 very hard to recognize. I'm already now sensitive to it now, so it's probably going to bug me. But that's the only thing I see as a downside uh, with this motor so far. It has it has that a little bit of that grainy feeling right there. Okay, but it is what it is, and I will report more as I uh, start getting into racing with this thing so the future plans for this wheel hoping you're enjoying this so far is i am going to convert over my stay stay with me here my fanatic uh, mclaren gt3 rim and sim racing garage sim racing machines i'm sorry i saw this on sim racing garage actually the conversion that's what motivated me to do it so thank you uh for doing that video a long time ago but still but i got this sim racing um machines adapter that will actually plug directly into the controller board here i have to take the wheel apart i'll probably do a video of it and i will of course then have this quick release not this part but this part mount it to the back and then this of course snap into my wheelbase obviously this flange won't be on there this flange of course comes with this connector for you to hook it up to some other wheelbase which you'll notice that flange has already comes with my AccuForce had you bought it done it your way uh, AccuForce you wouldn't uh, uh, without the quick disconnect and stuff you wouldn't uh, had this flange already pre-installed but it comes pre-installed since I did the complete kit with its own basically B and G uh, quick disconnect. Love the di uh, quick disconnect, by the way. It's very exact. Uh, you wanna hold this shaft here as you spin the wheel and then just snaps right into place. And it's no coming off. You're gonna drag the unit around <laughs> uh, with it. So I like that secure feeling. There's no extra slop in there uh, like you may get uh, with like, say the Fanatic V2 is what I'm used to using, right? Uh, you have you, you wanted to put that extra little pin in there to keep it from slopping back and forth uh, that does not exist with here so it is kind of a true disconnect really uh, as far as that goes which I like it but anyway as far as plans goes future plans future videos I will be converting this to use on some experience uh, basically what will happen to this will go into uh, this unit here without with this quick dis disconnect removed and utilizing this one on the back of it now I do like this part here too the nice carbon fiber but I don't want to get too far into this uh, it's just future plans with that with this video and I will be adapting the uh, button boxes to it real quick comparison between the uh, sim experience uh, wheelbase since I was talking about a little bit of the notchiness there, just to give you some perspective, what do you feel when you use the Fanatic? 
I feel like a lot of people are coming from a Thrustmaster that's going to be going to the AccuForce uh, wheelbase because it is a, a true plug and play experience. Works with just about every game out there on PC. Uh, so, yeah, that's a, a logical uh, progression, I think, for sim racers that are getting serious into sim racing. So, uh, this one here is the Fanatic V2. But when you turn this, it's very smooth. You don't, f you feel a notch. I don't feel nothing there. So there's a notch. That I don't really, you don't feel a notch, so to speak, besides that one centering notch I felt. Uh, but you feel, as you turn it, the, so we can get in here, the belt. So it's belt driven, right? Uh, you know, on a belt has the little teeth on it, right? You, you feel like, you feel those teeth. It's, it's so subtle being that it's rubber, you know, a belt that you don't feel the same. Like that's a definite notch, uh, that you feel a grainy notch. This one, you don't feel that it's just smooth, but you feel the belt tension rather against this, uh, where this won't, doesn't want to really spin freely like this one does. Uh, but you feel that you feel that constant tension. So you're losing a lot of forces with through that belt coming out to your wheel just because of this extra tension of tightening down these belts, uh, absorbing all the power and stuff. Now this is an eight newton meter unit, so it's going to be night and day difference between that. Uh, they say once you go direct drive, there's no comparison between direct drive and belt driven uh, wheels or cog driven wheels. But this has served me well for many years, and I feel like a lot of people will be moving up from say Fanatic. Club Sport line or a Thrustmaster T500 or, or whatever the other Thrustmaster TCSP XYZs that they call it nowadays out there. Uh, I can't keep up with all the names, guys. Sorry. But yeah, this is a natural progression. So anyway, that's it. This is ran long enough for the unbox video. I think this is probably already 30 minutes worth and or 25 minutes worth. So we will have more for you doing videos on the conversions and uh, giving you my first impressions and eventually the review on the AccuForce and as well as software setup. So stay tuned for more. We'll check you later on the trek. I'm out.